management of women with primary or recurrent genital lesions at the onset of labor. General management. The clinician must take a history in order to ascertain whether this is a primary or recurrent episode. A viral swab from the lesion or lesions should nonetheless be taken since the result may influence management of the neonate. The neonatologist should be informed. Primary episode. Cesarean section should be recommended to all women presenting with primary episode of genital herpes lesions at the time of delivery or within six weeks of the expected date of delivery in order to reduce exposure of the fetus to HSV, which may be present in maternal genital secretions. Intravenous ciclovir given intrapartum to the mother, 5 mg per kilogram every 8 hours, and subsequently to the neonate, intravenous aciclovir of 20 mg per kilogram every 8 hours, may be considered for those mothers opting for vaginal delivery. Where primary episode genital herpes lesions are present at the time of delivery and the baby is delivered vaginally, the risk of neonatal herpes is estimated to be 41%. The risk of perinatal transmission depends on the timing of maternal acquisition of HSV, with the highest risk in infants born to women who have not completed HSV seroconversion during pregnancy, most commonly in the third trimester within six weeks of delivery. Although vaginal delivery should be avoided if possible, in women who deliver vaginally in the presence of Primary genital herpes lesions, invasive procedures such as application of fetal scalp electrodes, fetal blood sampling, artificial rupture of membranes, and or instrumental deliveries should be avoided. Recurrent genital herpes Women presenting with recurrent genital herpes lesions at the onset of labor should be advised that the risk to the baby of neonatal herpes is low, 0-3% to for vaginal delivery. Vaginal delivery should be offered to women with recurrent genital herpes lesions at the onset of labor. The final choice of vaginal delivery versus cesarean section should be made by the mother. It has been reported that invasive procedures such as fetal blood sampling, application of fetal scalp electrodes, artificial rupture of membranes, and or instrumental deliveries increase the risk of neonatal HSV infection. Given the small background risk of 0-3% to of transmission in this group, the increased risk associated with invasive procedures is unlikely to be clinically significant so they may be used if required. There is no evidence to guide the management of women with a spontaneous rupture of membranes at term, but many clinicians will advise expediting delivery in an attempt to minimize the duration of potential exposure of the fetus to HSV. Genital herpes in preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes before 37 plus 0 weeks of gestation. Primary genital herpes in preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes, or PPROM. There is limited evidence to inform best obstetric practice when preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes is complicated by primary HSV infection. Management should be guided by multidisciplinary team discussion involving the obstetricians, neonatologists, and genitourinary medicine physicians. If the decision is made for immediate delivery, then the anticipated benefits of cesarean section will remain. If there is initial conservative management, the mother should be recommended to receive intravenous aciclovir 
of 5 mg per kilogram every 8 hours. Prophylactic corticosteroids should be considered to reduce the implications of preterm delivery upon the infant. If delivery is indicated within 6 weeks of the primary infection, delivery by cesarean section may still offer some benefit despite the prolonged rupture of membranes. Recurrent genital herpes in preterm prelabor rupture of membranes. When preterm prelabor rupture of membranes is encountered in the presence of recurrent genital herpes lesions, the risk of neonatal transmission is very small. In the case of preterm prelabor rupture of membranes before 34 weeks, there is evidence to suggest that expectant management is appropriate, including oral acyclovir of 100 mg three times daily for the mother and antenatal corticosteroid administration. Management of HIV positive women with herpes simplex virus infection, primary HSV infection, or herpes simplex virus infection. HIV positive women with primary genital HSV infection in the last trimester of pregnancy should be managed according to the recommendations for all women with primary genital HSV infection. Recurrent HSV infection or herpes simplex virus infection. Women who are HIV antibody positive and have a history of genital herpes should be offered daily suppressive acyclovir of 100 mg three times daily from 32 weeks of gestation to reduce the risk of transmission of HIV infection especially in women where a vaginal delivery is planned. Starting therapy at this earlier gestation than usual should be considered in view of the increased possibility of preterm labor in HIV-positive women. There is currently no evidence to recommend daily suppressive treatment of HSV for HIV antibody-positive women who are HSV1 or 2 seropositive but have no history of genital herpes. Management of the neonate General management In all cases, the neonatal team should be informed. Babies born by cesarean section in mothers with primary HSV infection in the third trimester. These babies are at low risk of vertically transmitted HSV infection, so conservative management is recommended. Swabs from the neonate are not indicated. No active treatment is required for the baby. Normal postnatal care of the baby is advised with a neonatal examination at 24 hours of age, after which the baby can be discharged from the hospital if well and feeding is established. Parents should be educated regarding good hand hygiene and due care to reduce risk of postnatal infection. Parents should be advised to seek medical help if they have concerns regarding their baby. In particular, they should be advised to look for skin, eye, and mucous membrane lesions, lethargy, irritability, and poor feeding. Babies born by spontaneous vaginal delivery in mothers with a primary HSV infection within the previous six weeks. These babies are at high risk of vertically transmitted HSV infection. If the baby is well, swabs of the skin, conjunctiva, oropharynx, and rectum should be sent for herpes simplex PCR. A lumbar puncture is not necessary. Empirical treatment with intravenous acyclovir of 20 mg per kilogram every 8 hours should be initiated until evidence of active infection is ruled out. 
Strict infection control procedures should be put in place for both mother and baby. Breastfeeding is recommended unless the mother has herpetic lesions around the nipples. Parents should be warned to report any early signs of infection such as poor feeding, lethargy, fever, or any suspicious lesions. If the baby is unwell or presents with skin lesions, swabs of the skin, lesions, conjunctiva, oropharynx, and rectum should be sent for herpes simplex PCR. A lumbar puncture should be performed even if CNS features are not present. Intravenous acyclovir of 20 mg per kilogram every 8 hours should be initiated until evidence of active infection is ruled out. Babies born to mothers with recurrent HSV infection in pregnancy with or without active lesions at delivery. In the case of recurrent genital herpes infections in the mother, Maternal immunoglobulin G will be protective in the baby and hence the infection risk is low. Surface swabs from the neonate are not indicated. No active treatment is advised for the baby. Normal postnatal care of the baby is advised with a neonatal examination at 24 hours of age after which the baby can be discharged from the hospital if well and feeding is established. Parents should be educated regarding good hand hygiene and do care to reduce risk of postnatal infection. Parents should be advised to seek medical help if they have concerns regarding their baby. In particular, they should be advised to look for skin, eye and mucous membrane lesions, lethargy, irritability, and poor feeding. Concerns regarding the neonate, clinical evidence of sepsis, and poor feeding. Surface swabs and blood for HSV culture and PCR. Intravenous acyclovir of 20 mg per kilogram every 8 hours should be given while awaiting cultures. Further management by the neonatal team according to condition of the baby and test results. Prevention of postnatal transmission. In 25% of cases, a possible source of postnatal infection is responsible, usually a close relative of the mother. Efforts to prevent postnatal transmission of HSV are therefore important and advice should be given to the mother regarding this. The mother and all those with herpetic lesions who may be in contact with the neonate, including staff, should practice careful hand hygiene. Those with oral herpetic lesions or cold sores should not kiss the neonate. Appendix number 1 Algorithm for the Management of Herpes in Pregnancy and Care of Neonate 